We used this slide to begin our last episode, and I want to draw your attention right down to here, to number two, because that's what we're going to be talking about this time. All right, density independent factors have nothing to do with how many individuals live in a given area. That's why it uses the word independent. All right, so this is going to affect every individual or the entire population and has nothing to do with how tightly packed together they are. All right, let's explain this with some better examples. All right, so here is a list of some examples of density independent factors. And I like to call the density independent factors the bad luck factors. Um, it has nothing to do with your ability or your fitness. You just happen to be caught in the wrong situation or you're just in the wrong place at the wrong time. For example, we have unusual weather. All right, now due to global climate change, we're starting to see more droughts in our country, and we're definitely starting to see some bizarre or out of the unusual uh, winter um, winter types of, uh, of weather. Uh, for example, the, the big blizzard that hits the northeast uh, during 2013, winter of 2013. Well, I want you to draw attention down here to this picture from the U.S. Drought Monitor. All right, if we were to look at this back five years ago, there'd be a heavy, heavy drought right down in here, okay? And you'll notice even this area is still isn't out of that drought. And that's because we've had a few tropical storms and a few uh, hurricanes come this way, and this area has gotten really well drenched, okay? Now the drought is here in the mid, uh, mid part of the United States along the Great Plains. And these are some heavy, heavy droughts. And in fact, um, you're gonna have some impact on the farmers because there's just not enough rain for their crops to be able to survive, okay? Uh, other natural disasters include blizzards, hurricanes. I mean, a hurricane can be extremely destructive to an environment. And, of course, blizzards with, with feet of snow and, and a very good cold snap can also knock down your, your population, Let's say deer, uh, squirrels, uh, elk if you're out in the Rockies, et cetera, et cetera. All right? Seasonal cycles. Um, we see, for example, in this part of the Midwest in Indiana, you're going to see more mosquitoes during the uh, summertime, especially in the spring, than you would in the wintertime. Uh, and that's just part of the seasonal cycle. So uh, some of these mosquitoes or other insects, they're going to die in the wintertime, and then they're going to bounce back in the summertime. And then we have human activities. Humans are notorious for destroying ecosystems. For example, and actually, you remember in our school district, we've had this great amount of growth. So think of the area along DuPont Road. It wasn't too long ago where that was a lot of farms. Now you have Walmarts, strip malls. Um, right along I-69, they've just built a new hospital. Uh, Parkview North, which used to be along, uh, it just used to be farmland out that way. In fact, uh, a lot of your housing additions, 15, 20 years ago, that was farmland. All right, so uh, we as humans, we have drastically... Um, and ha or drastically affected the ecosystems anytime we build anything, anytime we tear down the forest for logging or whatnot, uh, and anytime you throw it on the parking lot, you've, you've grossly changed the environment. All right? Pretty simple, short episode, and we're going to stop right here. So until the next time, catch you on the flip side.